My sex is trying its hardest to find some way to resolve the conflict with the unknowns other than fighting today. Ultimately, I am was able to resolve what Sifter was trying to achieve. But the result if the result of that is the future, I hope feels that he'll see me and show me what that is. signed already so when we last left um we encountered a whole bunch of new weird space aliens of which we had never encountered before try to avoid any kind of noises on the stream that's okay And so we're on to our next mission. We have a little chart thing on my end so I can find these sticky objectives if I need to. Okay, so we attack P bonus this next mission. Cut. Uh, a little bit of spare cash of which to spend. And stuff so when we last left off we encountered strange new aliens who are both hostile to both us and the gamelins um i upgraded captain uh, the additional training for the captain garantieries So he can uh, do repair fly after moving. Parts with a barrier left. then. Garantieris is going to have to be kind of vulnerable. Sorry about that. Yura, let's hear the results of your analysis with the unknowns we came into contact with the other day. Okay. Okay. Oh yes, also Tira is apparently engaged in transhumanism because he could upload his consciousness into um, computer systems and download it into spare bodies that he has handy just in case of emergency. Thirdly, he is sticking with a digital form um, and serving as co-pilot for Setsuna instead of having his own uh, robot. Yeah, that's a thing that happened. I, I, and this is the only real Gundam series where anything like this has ever happened before. That I'm aware of. I haven't seen all of Gundam 00, haven't seen all of Gundam Seed. Gundam NT gets close to this, but not really. I appreciate that we're actually talking about this in the dialogue. Is that the digitized version of Tyria? 
It looks like a sparkling fairy or something. Since the existing digitalized form, he says he wants to be, and to be able to co-pilot the celestial being mobile suit with you. I've already explained about their similar capabilities, but let's review the facts as we know them thus far. First of all, for clarity's sake, I'll refer to the unknowns as the PLS from here on out. PLS means extraterrestrial living metal shapeshifters. And it's a less clunky acronym than ELMS or ELMSSs. Extra living metal shapeshifters of unusual size? I don't believe they exist. Too vast space was a vast place, but I never could imagine something like them existing out here. Yes, I get that space is big, really big. I think it's a long way down the street to the chemist, but that's just peanuts to space, but still! Simulation and fusion of the ELS works as you can see, but, but one major characteristic of methods for the quantum brainwaves are That's a clunky sentence! How would I rephrase the key? Let me do the cadence on this. The assimilation and fusion of the ELS works, as you can see. I'm assuming that Iria is gesturing to a graphic which the game is not displaying on screen. Um, and that explains that chunk of dialogue. Otherwise, this is really clunky. So was that what we were feeling during battle? Uh, battle? That was coming from the blast. Effective. That's right. They also seem to be targeting humans that emit strong quantum brainwaves. No so new types. Thank you, Alleluia. Like innovators are new types, then. I think it was explained why all the ELS gathered around Setsuna. He is an innovator. Since you brought that up, I want to hear from Setsuna himself about what exactly was he trying to do, he was trying to do out there. Well, I think... Area, I think I should speak for myself. Alright, then. Let's hear it. I was trying to reason with... You mean you're trying to actually communicate with the ELS? Ilya Scheinberg. Founder of Celestial Being. Predicted that humankind would explore space and that would come into contact with the life form. However, he believed that before that could happen, we would first need to stop all conflict among ourselves. So kind of the bit from uh, Stalker, not Stalker, uh, Solaris, of we need to understand each other before we can understand alien life form. Now, in Solaris, the book, the way it's meant, the, the intent behind that is it's defeat. It is deliberately a defeatist mess uh, and nihilistic message from the part of the author. But it's basically out on the end of it, so we can never understand each other, so we can never understand aliens or bother. Um, <clears throat> Whereas the implication in the film, read my blog post about this at CountSeagrowOR.com, um, is, or rather my prose review of it, is that in Polaris, uh, Solaris, if we are actually coming to understand the aliens, and the aliens are coming to understand us, and thus by understanding aliens, we can understand each other. And the character who's expressing these reviews, reviews is depicted in a less favorable light and less sympathetic light, so we're not meant to sympathize with them. We're meant to look down on that perspective. It kind of shows before getting too many objectives getting too much off topic here, how transitioning from a prose medium to a film medium changes the message of a work in ways that neither author nor even the maker of the film can intend by having an actor or actress who you're trying to build rapport with. Moving back to this. The dream of a new age of humanity in which be free from our own conflict and conflict to understand the power of communicating with life forms other than our own. But the innovators were born. Humans who can quantum brainwaves to communicate with particles. Right. 
I was trying to receive the quantum brainwaves of those ELSs when they were emitting them and them. Maybe these guys are the bad guy are the antagonists from the from the Gundam 00 movie, which is interesting because they're sticking them in the same universe as Yamato, not the universe from Gundam 00. I tried to maximize my capability of understanding and attempt to make contact with them. Fighting them was futile. I wanted to avoid that at all costs. But didn't you just end up fainting? I couldn't withstand the vast amount vast of information they were emitting, and my brain shut down from the damage. But we still don't know anything about them, then. Indeed. That's enough. I don't think what you're trying to do is meaningless. I just don't think it's what we should be focusing on. Right? I know. You said it for right now. We need to get to Iskandar for the sake of the three dimensions that we're all depending on. I'm not saying I've forgotten our mission. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to stop what you're trying to do. But, I'm sure as you're clearly aware, our primary directive is to get moving towards Iskandar. We don't, exactly, don't know even know exactly where Iskandar is. In fact, we don't even have any proof that the place even exists. You have the Princess of Iskandar on your freaking ship! Compared to the success of our mission that we avoid all unnecessary combat at all possible. I'm assuming that Kodai is trying to lighten the is we don't know exactly where Iskandar is. We have one part of the crew, um, people from Iskandar, on board the ship. They provided their technology to help guide us here. But we don't know the exact coordinates. But yeah, we don't know the exact coordinates. Sure, these ELS show up again, it would suddenly behoove us all to try and avoid fighting them again. If there's any chance to avoid contact with them, our best hope is that he is the only one who has a chance at communicating with them. Capacity. That's right. Even he understands fully what you were trying to accomplish, Sekiro. I'm lighter to lighten his tone a bit because it's clear that his sprite, if you will, get it? Because they're saying it looks like a fairy, um, a, a glittering fairy. The sprite is now significantly decreased in size. We're all counting on you, Setsuna. I suddenly did feel something like their thoughts back there, but I had no idea what to do or how to respond. I also think Sitsuna is our best chance of achieving any kind of communication with them. I'd probably also suspect, actually, Banneger, that you and Heal, as some of the most powerful new types in the party, could also do well. But don't forget, if we are indeed unable to succeed at that, we will have no choice but to fight them. For that reason, your success is vital. So no pressure! That's the plan. However, if you don't succeed in negotiating with them, you have to eradicate them with our wave motion again. You want to have to resort to that? Oh, Eurisha, I didn't know you were there. Answer my question. Well, I, uh, I'll answer the question. I can, I'll answer that question. Well, I can at least tell you what Commander Okita thinks. Listening. The Commander does not think of the wave motion gun as a weapon, so he has no plan to use it as a tool for the part. Wave motion energy is not a weapon. Should not be weaponized. It must be used only for space travel. Basically, kind of taking the tack of their power and nuclear powered vessels. Right. And also, as for you, me, good luck. Thank you. What, what exactly is all this about? Well, she is an envoy from Iskandar who traveled 16,000 light years. Sorry, sorry. Um, 168,000 light years, slight difference, to extend a helping hand to Earth, you know. Racer seems like the kind of person who'd prefer to avoid conflict rather than invite it. I, I'm simply upholding my duties. I agree with Commander Ogita's thoughts on this one. The wave motion engine gun was derived from the wave motion engine. It would only be used if necessary to get the Yamato safely to Iskandar. Indeed. Okay, the gun based on the technology that drives the wave motion engine. Not something that someone from Iskandar would have be ever thought up. Though you were not wrong in keeping with the technology of our wave motion engine, after all. Basically, kind of the, the mindset here is... Iskandar is a society... That's a long title. 
Hold. So there, it's blowing right away. So, quick explanation, finish discussion here, then we can put a cut in. Episode break here. Um, pick up that. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. I also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. 